just so everyone knows, this is our last commitment to the film. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, honestly, I don't mean like, wait, ever. <laughs> Seriously, from the prep, we've been, it's been 18 months of, of emotional, uh, and the adrenaline came, and I've had yawns today that started there about six months ago and came out today, so... Um, <laughs> But I'd just like to thank 4DVD because, uh, in all honesty, when Ian rang Shane and said, you know, we're getting back together, keep a secret for three weeks, can you come and film it? I literally went and filmed the press conference and three weeks later, we were still doing This Is England 88, and I rang uh, Channel, you know, I rang Tessa and I said, look, we've got this m amazing um, opportunity to make a film. I need no less than a million and probably no more than two. I've got no idea what it's going to be like, but it's Shane and it's the Roses we need a, an answer fairly soon and they said how long i said an hour and, uh, <laughs> and an hour later they went we're in and so you know and david threw some money so it was like one of those where we had it was a complete what's going to happen in the next 18 months and cut to now and this you know i've just been amazed at what these films and how it's been received in the last few in the last few days since thursday night when the band saw it till you know the twitter the tweets and all the all the positive energy it makes people feel like they want to either be in a band or just you know have a good laugh and I can assure you that I hope, you know, um, that you go out and have a few beers after, because it, because every time people have seen it, they just want to go and get pissed. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, yeah, um, yeah. It's been a about well, a labour of love, because obviously the amount of work that's kind of gone into it. Because when I started, and the band asked me to do it, I, I was just like, you know, you can't let anyone else make this film. It's got to be me. I, you know. I, I'll top myself, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, walk up to your ass in just my underpants covered in toffee if you don't let me do it. But I was really scared as well. I kind of thought, I've never actually made a documentary. I'm setting myself up for a bit of a fall here. And then really early on, the noises were just... I've never seen reactions like it. The roses bring something with them. There's an enigma that follows them round that when you sort of get attached to it, you really shit yourself. Because I was kind of going, everyone's now... I've not even shot it, and everyone's going, this is going to be the best film ever in the world. <laughs> I mean, I've never made one before like that, so, you know, I couldn't hide away. I had nothing to hide behind. Um, but me and Mark, we were, we were just about to make uh, our biggest film to date, which we're still planning to do with, um, you know, with film four. Uh, it was going to be a 10 or 15 million pound budget, and then we got the call from Ian, and so like Mark said when he rang them, he wasn't only asking them to make a decision in an hour. He was going, you know, we're not, we're not doing that, and we are doing this, and... Um, and obviously it was it was out of, well out of my comfort zone, but I'd missed um, a Spike Island gig when I was 17, and I lived in a really tiny, tiny little place in Toxeter. Uh, you weren't allowed out of the, uh, the the limits of the city, you know, it was one of those places where the closest I think I got to Manchester, even though it was only 45 minutes away, was I bought a second-hand poncho with a sort of... Um, medieval symbol on it that had been bought from Aztec Palace in Manchester and I bought that second hand and felt like I belonged you know <laughs> so this um, I'd got sort of you know a lot of people say you know they see bands and then they want to be in a band and that happened to me I saw the roses and I wanted to be in a band and I formed a band a shit band with Paddy Cox and I and um, but there was something about the bravado, when you saw them guys interviewed on TV, they were from the same place that I was from. They bought council houses, you know, not the worst part of the world, but they were, they were from somewhere that resonated with me. You're coming out of, uh, you know, I was looking at, I'd left school with no qualifications and I was looking at a YTS at best and I was on a waiting list for one. And, um, and there was something about the belief of them. They kind of went on and went, you know, we're the best band in the world. We don't care whether you believe us or not, but at some point in your life, you're gonna fall in love with us. And that really resonated with me. So when I went for my very first funding for films, because um, people say, oh, you know, did they inspire you to be a band? For me, they inspired me to be a filmmaker. You know, I had no education, no qualifications. You know, that I, I went out and kind of got myself off the back of seeing these amazing people, but I never got to see them live. So roll forward, <laughs> you know, 22 years, and um, and I get that phone call uh, from Ian Brown. You know, and I, you know. So I missed the most important gig of my generation, but suddenly was given this ticket to actually make up and recapture my youth, which people say isn't possible, and I, this proves it is. <laughs> um, and then in terms of, obviously, we <coughs> shot 500 hours of stuff. So what you're seeing here is the tip of the iceberg. So the t in terms of DVD and with all That's every awesome. interview that we'd be asked, everyone's like, what, can we get more of that? Can we have more? And it all exists in there. So we, we've sort of said... To actually get the best of the two, we both have to stop making films now and just literally become the Stone Roses <laughs> filmmaking club. And, uh, and you know, so, so uh, you know, without trying to sell anything to anybody, 
these fans um, are really special. You know, I thought I was the, the, the biggest fan in the world until I got to Warrington, which you'll see in here, and I met a million other people that were just like me. And, you know, they're going to want to own this, and we've got, you know, ultimately, we've, we've hopefully delivered something that we cared about so much, it's, you know, and, and it's about the fans as much as it is about the Roses. Um, so, fingers crossed we can... No, I, yeah, I mean, we're finalising it now, but some of the, I mean, actually just whittling down what extras can be on there is a hard job, so, like I say, we, we've been on it, last commitment today, but chains on holiday next week, we're going to sit down and go through, we've got some amazing material. We thought of a, I've mean, been in touch with some of the old guys from Manchester, and we thought about doing this, um, like a limited edition box set with an E, from the, um, from the, <laughs> from the 80s, a non-functioning, yeah. 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 <laughs> I thought that'd be really, like, with a little dove on it. And I thought, yeah, that's the best one, yeah. one yeah. 25 quid. <laughs> 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 that'll be the one that you should sell, so... Uh, yeah. I'll let you put your name to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay away from the... Anyway, enjoy in the uh, party <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we really hope you enjoy it, and obviously it was made from, from a really good place. And you'll see me and him are, like, 17 years old again. You know, you know it's, I tried to be cool. <laughs> and I really did try to be cool. The very first time I met the rest of the band, they said, Shane, come in the lift, you know, bring your camera, come in the lift, we'll go down to the press conference. I got in the lift, the alarm went off because me being in the lift made it too heavy. And I looked at the side and it said eight people and there was five of us and I just went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> got out and walked downstairs with my camera and then, so I think November, six months later, um, I went to see John Squires to show him at his house. The, the latest cut of the film got lost, um, and I, I mentioned this pressure you might have heard. I don't want to repeat myself, but I basically had I was sort of really, really stressed, and, and, and got the film in a, on a laptop on my lap, and we got lost in the middle of nowhere. He lives on this farm, and it was really icy. And we're going up this hill, and we, were going, we, we knew we were lost. And it got steeper and steeper, and then the wheels started spinning, and we started sliding backwards down this hill, and uh, and so I thought this is awful. I'm going like, to have a massive accident. And we stopped, we landed in this hedge and we're alive. And, uh, and then a horse came over the hill, slipped over because it was icy, it landed on its horse and slid down towards where we were. <laughs> I'm not kidding, honestly, it gets better. <laughs> the horse came really close and I was just sat there thinking, why this? You know, can't it, like, I'd rather die like, a heroin overdose. <laughs> I'm going to be fucking dead by a horse in a car with a seatbelt on. And, it, it, and the horse went the other way and I went, thank Christ for that. I was so hot, even though it was cold, I'd got really stressed. I wound the window down, and this is, this is the truth. A bird, maybe a goose, was on its way back. A goose. To a goose, honestly. <laughs> what came through the window had to be a goose. <laughs> it did a shit, and it came in through the window, and I was on the phone trying to get through to John. It hit my hand, my face went all over my face. Hair. So I just turned up at John's, like, hey, I'm Shane. <laughs> Shit. I'm lost, I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, I'll just bend over now in front of your tally, show me builder's horse and get out of here. So, yeah, I'm not cool. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enjoy. enjoy. <laughs>